So my mom, she was like, you know what? You're bad and you're crazy. And we're not going to put you in public school because I know what you're going to get into. So she put me in private school. So what's the deal <laughs> with this bench press? You know, you hit a 716-pound bench press. I think it's your yep. best so far in competition, right? Yep. You can't just say, oh, well, I'm not getting stronger right now. Let me go ahead and get on some gear. Like, that's the dumbest thing. So I've always wanted something better. Like, I don't I don't, I don't like being average. Like, to me, I think average is just quitting. Mm -hmm. And then you go out there and just totally annihilate <laughs> it. And everyone's like, oh what? God, he's so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all seen that. That was my third. I had more to take, but... Come see me next time. What's some of the keys to bench pressing? Because I know a lot of people want to, they want to up their bench, right? And so what are some of the keys? <laughs> what are things that have really helped you a lot? I was talking to my boy on the way here, like about the semen retention thing. Because he's like, yeah, because I do that. I do that a week before. Yeah. But I think this next, when I come back, I think I'm going to try to do two weeks before. I John mean. Mayer, brother. Oh, I love John Mayer. John Mayer is so Okay. John Mayer, Money brother. He is a wonderland. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. Every time he has a new album, I cut that on. Don't bother me. I'm listening to it from front and back maybe twice, three times. Don't bother me. Guys, these legendary tasty pastries have changed the game. They're 20 grams of protein, five grams of carbs. If you were a kid, and I was a kid that ate Pop-Tarts, mm -hmm. um, those things tasted great. But the difference, man, Andrew, what are the macros on Pop-Tart? Yes, for a regular Pop-Tart, we're looking at 190 calories, 37 carbs, 16 grams of sugar, and only two grams of protein. As comparison to a tasty pastry, we're looking at only 180 calories, five net carbs, zero sugars, and 20 grams of protein. And this bad boy is gluten-free. There you go. That's right. And they taste so good. Like, I'm eating it cold. I got here a little bit of coffee. <laughs> it's so good, though. You guys can warm this up, man. Yeah. They have so many flavors on their website, too. You have to check them out, Andrew. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. You guys got to head over to eatlegendary.com. Uh, they have tons of different things. They have almonds. They have butters. They have amazing flavored everything and everything. Everything is all health conscious. Everything has low to no sugar. They have nut butters. <laughs> they have nut butters, and you can't help but smile when you say nut butters. But head over to eatlegendary.com and use promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Um, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. I know it sounds like we're overhyping it, but I promise you we are not. You guys have to go try these tasty pastries right now. What's uh, what's TD stand for? Touchdown? Thomas Davis. Oh, that's my name. Yeah. <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> no, I'll play defense, bro. I wouldn't score no touchdowns. <laughs> I was a nose guard, so I was right there, smack dab on the center. How long you been lifting for? Oh, man. Since high school, really, is when I really got serious into lifting, and I just loved it, man. It's been my thing. I, I think my first max ever was like 185. I was a freshman, and then before I graduated, I did like four sixty five. Mm. But that was like the bouncing and your butts off the bench. Right. Like it wasn't it wasn't clean at all. But you know, it was one of those. You're a big, big man. Uh, yeah. What did you weigh back then? Uh, I was about three forty before I graduated. Damn, I was a big boy. What do you know? Four thirty. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. I grew a little bit. <laughs> what? What? Uh, how tall are you? Uh, six three. Okay. Yeah. He's a big boy. Did you, <laughs> when you played football, did you have goals of like going pro in football? Or man, I did, but I didn't have the grades for it. I went to a Catholic school, and our grading scale was crazy. So, mm -hmm. if I went to a public school, I probably would have passed through. But I mean, I'm glad I did what I did. You know, it's, it's all right. But I still watch football all the time, and yeah. you know, it was, it was between football or being a wrestler. But wrestling was my first love because I used to watch. You know, the Attitude Era. That was my thing. Oh yeah, you know. You know, DX yes. and Stone Cold. Yes. And those were my guys. So that was my first love. There we go. Yeah. Uh, going to Catholic school, was that okay to watch whatever? Like, I don't really know what that experience Man, is like. Let me tell you. <laughs> 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 you had to be, like, cautious with some of the things you did over there. Because, uh -huh. like, I'm, I'm from the ghetto, man. So it's like I had to, like, really – you know, step into their way of life. But, I mean, it was, it was all right. Yeah, and how'd you end up going to Catholic school? Um, well, Just keep the mic a little closer. Oh, sorry. Yep. So my mom, she was like, you know what? You're bad and you're crazy. And we're not going to put you in public school because I know what you're going to get into. So she put me in private school. And I, I did um, from since fifth grade until I graduated in high school. So... My mom put me in, like, we're not even fucking Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in Catholic school up until, like, uh, uh, I think it was the fourth grade, and then I got expelled. Oh, wow. Then I went to public school. How did you, uh, yeah, tell me how you, you, you got expelled? Can't just, you yeah. can't just say I got expelled and then go on. You got to tell us what happened. There's Michael. He, uh, 
He was a little, uh, he was a bully. Uh-huh. Uh, and one day Michael said something to me okay. and then flipped me off. And he, his finger was this close to my face. Uh-huh. So I took his finger and I bent it back. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to public school. So... <laughs> Like, bam, transition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It's like something, something out of a movie, like where you just see the scene of you like breaking the kid's finger and then the next scene. <laughs> no one's supposed to put their finger that close to no. somebody's nah, face. Nah, hey, I don't you blame know? you. You do what you're supposed to do. But, hey. Well, he hilarious. learned his lesson. I bet he didn't do it again. <laughs> Hopefully. So what's the deal with this bench press? You know, you hit a 716-pound bench press. I think it's your yeah. best so far in competition, right? Yep. But then... You know, you're benching, and there's like a lot of these big guys benching these huge weights. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden, you decide to throw your hat into full meat powerlifting. Yeah. And you've got one of the biggest totals ever yeah. in sleeves. Yeah. What's going on with that? I just, I felt like there was more to me than bench press, and I didn't want to live in myself. And, you know, you get those comments like, oh, he's bench only, he's bench only. And that kind of like sparked it a little bit. And then, <laughs> you know, having the coach I have now, Josh Bryant, like he knew everything, and, you know, he's he's great. And then also being teammates with uh, James Strickland because he was the first one that I seen convert like that. And I'm like, man, if James could do it. And that's my boy. Like, let me see if I can try this out. And ever since then, man, I'm I've been just doing it. And I love it. I can't I can't get enough of it. That's incredible. Yeah, uh, Josh Bryant was um, raving about your explosiveness. Yeah, he loves that. Where does that come from? Honestly, I think it came from track. Doing oh. track, I did I did track in uh, college for a couple of years, and I the work we did and power cleans and just the high shrugs and just trying to really be explosive, you know, cause you gotta throw an object as far as you can. So you can't just be strong. You have to be explosive and just really be able to torque your body and do everything you can to get that ball or the disc or the weight or whatever you're throwing. And that type of training really translated to powerlifting. And it, I, I, I'm so glad I did it. You know, you squatted 800 mm-hmm. and you benched 700 in, in a full competition, 716, 716. And then what was the deadlift at? Uh, my best deadlift was 859 in competition. Damn. Yeah. So, what, like right now, so people can have context before we continue the conversation. What is your total? Where are you all time right now? How old are you and how long have you been lifting? Okay. So, total, uh, 2375. Uh, what was the other question? I'm sorry. <laughs> how, like, how old are you and how long have you been focusing on I, powerlifting? Uh I will be 30 in July, so I'm 29 now. I've been focused on powerlifting since probably right after high school. Mm-hmm. That's when I started to like really get into it. Like I was, you know, I knew I was going to play football, and but I love to lift. Like that was my thing to like keep me out of trouble. So yeah, I stayed in the gym like all the time. I would bench like four times a week if I had to. Like I stayed in the gym. So there's a lot of young kids hopping on performance enhancing drugs, you know, because they see. Uh, the success of other people on Instagram, mm-hmm. YouTube, and so forth, and they want to kind of hop into that same position. Right. Um, but you've told me that you did a 661 bench uh, in competition, drug tested. Correct. So it was, a bef- it was before you ever, now, nowadays you're on TRT. Correct. That's fucking incredible. I think, I think it's great for people to see more examples just so they can, because I think people put a limitation on themselves. They put a ceiling on themselves. Big time. And it's like, yeah, you may be at a deficit, but man, once you you have to learn to work hard too through the deficits as well. Like, you can't just say, "Oh, well, I'm not getting stronger right now. Let me go ahead and get on some gear." Like, that's the dumbest thing. And I see on TikTok and Instagram, and even like kids in my high school, like, "Oh, trend this, trend." Like, you kids don't even know what you're talking about. Like, don't talk about that stuff. Like, you don't know. But then again, I guess it's part of the culture now. Everybody wants to be a part of something and. You know, but I just I fear for these kids now that think that that's so cool. And it's like you have no idea, like if you start doing this, like what's gonna do to your body? Like you, a lot of these kids have, you know, levels that are great, and like they want to mess it up. Like don't do that now. Like <laughs> use what you got. Can can I think this is a good point to like get into what we were talking about a bit before the podcast mm-hmm. about like your nutrition, how your nutrition's finally in line. Yeah, but. You're, you talk about how your test levels were at like 131. 171. 171. Yep. When you, and that was a little bit of, a little while ago, but that was because of how you grew up and your nutrition. So mm-hmm. can you talk to us about some of that? Yeah. So uh, seeing my doctor, he, you know, we've we seen the results and I was like, why is it so low? And we, we started talking about like what I was eating as a child. 
and you know like the super hormone foods like you know just bad foods for you like anything that's got the extra stuff that we don't need that other countries don't have but America has because it's cheaper you know unfortunate and you know you know I used to drink 2% milk like all the time you couldn't keep it in the house if I was there you know mm-hmm. drinking stuff like that eating McDonald's and whatnot, and things like that that really got into it as far as nutrition and then sleep you know being a correction officer for five and a half years you know I wasn't getting a lot of sleep because I would do that 12 hour shift to go train or go work in my other job and not get much sleep so a, a combination of those two and also being a big boy kind of didn't help but doing all that kind of s- just shrunk me down a little bit but <laughs> um, growing up did you uh, always want something more for yourself you said in your own words you grew up in the hood mm-hmm. um, what was some of that experience like and did you always kind of think that you were going to do something bigger or different or outside of where you grew up I always wanted to do something bigger, and I thought that football was my way, like you know, because that's what I loved at the time. And but you know, that wasn't reality. And now it's like this is what I'm doing now. Like I just, I love it. So like I've, I want to take this as far as I can, and you know, even go to heights that haven't been touched yet. I want to, I want to be able to say, hey, I'm making a lot of money powerlifting. Like, I'm doing something cool. Like, it may not be right away here, but even if I'm not like in on the scenes, like doing something, maybe making some money like outside the scenes. But I want to be able to help these younger guys coming up because I mean, this is a wonderful sport. And if I can break off some cash and help these guys that you know are struggling but want to be professional, like I would love to do something like that. Like, you've done many things for our sport. Like, I want to be able to say I've done this for the sport, and I've made you know good money and I've, i'm happy and i'm successful with this so i've always wanted something better like i don't i don't i don't like being average like who like i shouldn't say who but to me i think average is just quitting you know to me so yeah. where did you grow up south Bend, indiana so we're like an hour and a half from chicago okay so we get a lot of traffic from chicago coming our way <laughs> you think powerlifting is a good sport for uh, young kids that um you know trying to get kids off the street type of thing of course of course like me, I grew up, I used to like to fight, you know, I had anger issues, I, I still got teeth marks on my knuckles, like, you know, uh, I used to fight all the time, and learning how to, you know, put my anger to something else, which lifting, you know, I, I go into it, you know, from even when I was a younger kid, like my dad dying, and, you know, I would do push-ups, you know, here and there, and I'd feel sad or whatever, and then, you know, when I got older, my uh, stepson had passed away, and, you know, uh, well, my son, I call him my son. He wasn't mine biologically, but I was dating his mother, and he was my he was my boy, Bryson. And, you know, he passed away. Like, I, it's funny. I was stuck at, like, 585 on bench. He passes away. I stick my ass in the gym because I was just upset. I didn't know how to channel my anger somewhere else besides the gym. And I hold things in as a man because I'm prideful. And I say within, what, it was, like, about a month, I smoked 600. Actually, you guys shared it on one of your YouTube videos because I had your rap song. I was like, shout out to Mark Bell on that one. That was pretty cool. But I remember doing that. Like, man, like, I'm glad I can have this outlet to put everything in. Like, and I think a lot of kids need to understand, like, you can't have another outlet. You don't have to do anything stupid, you know. When you were getting, when you were psyching yourself up for that bench, were you thinking about Bryson? Of course I was. Of course. And it flew. It felt like an Have you ever gotten yourself too far in that direction? Like where it kind of messed you, kind of messed you up almost. No, I, 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 I allow it to just come. Like, yeah. if if I can if I can get past that limit to where it's like wow, like I think I'm just gonna make it fly even more. Like, mm-hmm. I just I think about being explosive and being powerful, and think about who I'm doing it for. You know, like that's who like I, that's how I think about it. So, do you have like when you're going for big PRs or big lifts and meets? What's going through your head? What's your process? Because some lifters have like a ritual that they do before every single lift, or thoughts that they have. What is it for you? Make every lift look like an opener. Make it go fast. No doubt, no question. If you're squatting, bury it and make it go fast. It's nice to get that reaction from the crowd, and they go, "Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. that's the best reaction." It's like. <laughs> Y'all seen that, didn't y'all? That was my third, but you like, know, I have more. Like, time. everyone thinks you're going to kind of struggle with it because mm-hmm. the weight sounds so heavy. Everyone's getting amped up, mm-hmm. and then you go out there and just totally annihilate <laughs> it. it. And everyone's like, oh what? God, he's so strong. <laughs> <laughs> y'all seen that. That was my third. I have more to take, but 
come see me next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we had like this campaign and we still have a lot of stuff that says lift through it. And that's mm-hmm. essentially what you did. Yeah. And like, I don't really have necessarily a, a question on that or anything, but well, actually yeah, I do like, do you still tap into some of that? Like, oh, cause, yeah. cause there's a lot of people that will say like, Oh, it's not good to really go back into like that. I'll say negative, even though maybe you're, you're still doing it out of love, yeah. but we'll just say negative as in like, it gets you kind of like, we'll say angry. Um, some people will say like, Oh, don't go to that dark place because you know, you can only go there so much. Um, are you finding that you might even kind of look at it as a more positive thing? Like I'm going to do this for Bryson to make him proud. Or is it more like, I want my son back. I'm going to beat the shit out of this weight. It's more of like, this is for him. Like everything I do, him, some of my homies I've had passed away. You know, like I think about them. Like it's like it's a whole con- collective. If not, it may not be like somebody that passed away. Just like my city too, man. Because we got a lot of oh, crazy yeah. stuff going on. We people call South Bend like Baby Chicago because we have a lot of murders and got a lot of drugs going through. So it's like it's crazy, man. Like I, I lost a lot of friends, man. And you know, it's it's crazy, but it's how it is. So I, I think about like. Let this be the light to the city a little bit, you know, because mm-hmm. all thing we got really going is like Notre Dame, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. I think about that like it's not just me; it's all this is bigger than me. What I'm doing is bigger than me. Yeah. So I do it for them. It just it reminds it just popped in my head. Um, uh, old older rapper A Z, but he says I'm destined to live the dream for all my peeps who never made it, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what I feel like you're doing right now. Yeah, that's pretty. I'm dope. trying. Yeah. There's a song by Big Sean called "Bigger Than Me." Uh-huh. And you should check that out. And that's like one of my songs. Like before I go on, I'm like, you know what? Cut it on. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know if you want to get me started on like newer rappers. Like, this is why I, 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 rap. I don't hate, hate anybody. Hate. I'm just saying. I, I, I just know what I like, <laughs> and it happens to be that. better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know, think you have any preference, bro. Yes, sir. Hey, I think Sean's not new. No, nah, he's he's been around <laughs> yeah, the game. Bro. I mean, you know, '90s is. Right, Still right, new, right. New, uh, in for me. New, so yeah, you're old. I'm I'm up there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Who do you think my favorite artist is? And it's not rap. I guarantee Ooh, you guys. Can you give us a genre? Give us a give us the genre. I'll, I'll tell you. He plays a guitar. He's probably one of the baddest on the guitars. Jimi Hendrix? No. Johnny Cash. You, you, you're close with the J. You're close to J. Uh, White guy. Even know. Smooth boy. I don't even have John Mayer, brother. Oh, I love John Mayer. John Mayer is so okay. John Mayer, brother. He is a wonderland. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. Every time he has a new album, I cut that on. Don't bother me. I'm listening to it from front and back maybe twice, three times. Don't bother me. Love John Mayer's Mayer. peace. Like it's this just like very key. yeah. He is man. I, I bump some John Mayer. I don't care if I'm in the hood. Or I'm about to go somewhere else. Like nice. John Mayer's playing. How long have you liked John Mayer? Since I was like. Oh man, I'd say probably since like 2001 when he came out with his first album. I found no him in high thing. school. No, yes! yes. I wanna run through the halls. Yes! I'm like, so pumped for Hall. <laughs> I must listen to some John Mayer today. It's been a minute for me, but hey. I love that dude. He has really good music. He does, man. Yeah. He's great. That's good shit, man. Yeah. It's good to hear. That's uh, something that might be playing right before you go and hit your big. No, nah, I ain't gonna lie. No, I got some. You need Usually, something to turn you up different for that. Um, you know, I like this song called uh, God's Country by Blake Shelton. I love that song. It kind of gets me into that mode. That um, I like a, I like a lot of things, man. I'm one of those guys. I listen to any type of like genre music. So like anything that's got a really up-tempo beat. Uh, my boy Shinedown, shout out to them, man. They're, they're cool, bro. I uh, actually worked for them one time in, in, uh, in the South Bend. And ever since then, we've been cool. So I rock with them a lot, too. Yeah. Let me ask this. So I think you, you kind of talked about it a little bit before, but mm-hmm. what are, okay, so you have the, you're going to be breaking some of these all time records. Uh-huh. Um, but what do you want to do a lot, like with powerlifting? Like what, what, what kind of, what kind of impact do you want to have? What do you want to be able to build? I want to make powerlifting as mainstream as possible. And for the simple fact that like you see like these stories, like of these 70 year old, like, you know, grandma's coming out here and banging weights with these giants, you know, like it's crazy. Like, yeah, they're not lifting what we're lifting, but you still out here doing this. Like, I think that's so cool. Like we, we have a lady at our gym. Her name is Miranda. She's a great lady. And she has one leg and she squats and deadlifts. She competes full power. She makes no excuses. And it's like to see somebody like her do things. It's like, why do I complain about my, my leg extensions today? Like, she's in here banging with one leg. She has to keep herself upright. 
as much as possible, and she buries these squats. Mm -hmm. It's like people should see this more. Like this is a cool sport, and people should really see like what we have to like bring and what we have to offer. Like basketball, football, that's all cool. I love that stuff, but powerlifting is so great because anybody can do it. Yeah, I always felt that the barrier of entry was so low, but not even necessarily just to go do it in the gym, but, like, as we get older, you know, it's like you see the dudes at, like, I don't know, like, um whatever, um like, fitness center you go to, and they're, like, still playing basketball, elbowing people, and, like, you know, still thinking they can get after it, yeah. but not everybody can do that, but with powerlifting, you can actually go and compete amongst people that are like you yes. you know and and it's all super supportive yeah. so that's what i loved about powerlifting is just like i'm looking around and be like dude everyone looks different everyone is putting in their all mm -hmm. and at, at all different ages and it's like shit like i think yeah like my whole family could do this like yeah. I, that's i yeah you're right i think more people do need to be exposed to it i think so too yeah it's great um, you so you had your blood work done, right? Like you you hit that big bench, and then maybe just you weren't feeling well, or like mm -hmm. what what kind of led you to investigate your testosterone levels? Just like I was so fatigued all the time, my mood was so weird. I was so tired, I didn't want to do anything. Um, my sex drive was low. I'm, I'm like, man, that's never happened to me. Like, like this, this is weird. Like, I just how my body's feeling, like how I feel mentally too. Like, I just fell out of the game. Like, I felt like I was like, oh, I'm kind of checking out here, and doing some research, it's like, oh, maybe this is what it, it is. And sure, sure enough, I, I was an old man when it came to my, my level. So, you know, everything else came back great, you know, but that was just, like, low. Like, 171 is super low, you know. And I hadn't taken anything before. Like, some people are like, well, maybe, you know, you've taken anything. Like, no, I was completely clean. I, was, I wasn't about that. I wanted to be as natty as I could for the longest until I actually needed to do anything, you know, but... And I, I, I did what I was supposed to do, Natty, and, you know, now I'm on TRT, and we're banging it now. Yeah. So along with that, what did you – because your nutrition only changed last year. You said yeah. you've been only having good nutrition for a year. So my curiosity is, like, what kind of stuff were you eating the year before that? Like, how was your diet? And now, mm -hmm. what's your diet now? Okay, so before, <laughs> wasn't the best, you know, I – I would try to do a little bit of meal prep here and there. Like, I'd try to do some steak here and there, but it wasn't enough. I didn't realize, like, what I was eating wasn't enough for me to eat and, like, actually be full. Because once, you know, you know, if you don't eat enough, your body is, like, kind of starving itself. And then you kind of, you hold on to more of what you, you know, you shouldn't be holding on to. So, um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't it was horrible. You know, I, like I said, I tried to meal prep. and then You probably weren't eating enough protein in general. No, not Especially for how much near, muscle you have. Nowhere near as much protein. Like, I thought, you know, just eating these couple of steaks here and there was enough. But, like, no, nah, like, now I got protein in my car. I got protein in my bag somewhere. Like, I got protein everywhere. I got protein in my office at work. Mm -hmm. Like, it's everywhere. So, you know, and, like, now, like, you know, obviously protein's upped and my meals have upped. So, like, I measure everything now. And just seeing, like, what I eat makes a big difference, too. Like, my friend's like, yeah, you should try to log your food. Like, oh, okay, cool, that's whatever. But, like, actually doing it now, like, seeing what you're actually eating and seeing, like, you know, this product does this, this is this. And, like, you see, like, your progression throughout the day. It's like, wow. I, I, now I kind of, like, know what I can eat throughout the day. Like, I don't even have to look at the program anymore. Like, okay, I can get away with having this bagel, with this protein shake if I do this. And mm -hmm. It's like, it's so cool, like, to know, like, what you're doing. Yeah, and do you I, know, I feel better. Yeah, do you know how many calories you're eating per day right now? Uh, about four thousand right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, not too crazy. No, but yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was. I like, still burn weight off, you know, four thousand. So I'm, I'm cool with that. And uh, <laughs> do you know how many grams of protein? Oh, a lot. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't tell you the number, but a lot. Oh, good. Uh, okay. So I usually in the morning, I eat uh, four regular eggs and I have a cup of egg whites. And I mix that all together, scramble it up, do a, a bagel with um, just a little bit of light butter, and then I have three scoops of protein, and I do that with water. Scoops. And then I'll do, you know, a regular meal, so I do with 300 grams of, I mix my bison with ground beef, and it's all lean, uh, white rice, and then the, so the, the protein is 300 grams, the rice is uh, 150 right now, then I do like 100 grams of like a vegetable, mm -hmm. and then I do like two meals like that, and then, depending on where I'm at. And if I'm training that day, I may have like a Jimmy John sandwich. So I have that macros like right before I go in and bam, we just, we go crazy. What was it like 
transitioning into being this regimented because a lot of people start that and then they just stop because they're like, this is too much work. It's too much to think about. Mm-hmm. But you're weighing out your food. You're you're doing all this. Yeah. Uh, wh- what did that take from you? Uh, Maybe get the mm, mic a little bit. Oh, sorry. It's it's bad habit. habit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think the biggest thing for me was saying, hey, one day at a time. Because I think some people look at it like, oh, I got to do this for forever. Like, don't think about it like that. Because, like, if you think about the long term, you have to do baby steps first. You're going to overwhelm yourself mentally. So it's like, oh, no, I don't want to do it no more. So you start with, hey, day one, day two, day three. Go through that first couple weeks, and it's like, oh, this is easy. Once you get through those couple weeks for me, like, a couple weeks, I'm cool. I can do whatever. So... What's some of the keys to bench pressing? Because I know a lot of people want to, they want to up their bench, right? And so what are some of the keys? <laughs> what are things that have really helped you a lot? Um, what I see a lot too, like a lot of guys, and I don't I don't hate the idea, but for me, it's a nitpick for me, especially if I'm like coaching somebody. I don't like the suicide grip. Ooh. And the reason why I don't like suicide grip. Thumbless is, grip. Yeah. It's, thumb, I shouldn't say suicide. Sorry about that. But um, thumbless grip. You're going around, you're not having full control of the bar, in my opinion. I feel like once you wrap your thumb around and you're really grabbing that bar, you think about it. If I'm grabbing your hand, I'm just, you know, I grab it, I can really grab your hand, but if yeah. I'm just like right here, I'm really not going to be able to grab that hand. Exactly. I want full control of the weight. The more control I have over the weight, the better power I can have with that weight. I can, I can control it better. So, like, I think that people really are misguided when they do the thumbless grip. Do you still see a lot of people doing thumbless grip? Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think it's like a comfort thing for some people. It feels better on their wrist or something, but... I mean, build you your wrist to, up. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, build your wrist and forearms, right? Yes, got to, especially forearms. Like, forearms are everything. Like, not just for, you know, your standard, like, primary list, but even just, like, with, like, dumbbell stuff. And I love I loved doing forearm work. I did a lot of forearm work for track because, you know, you're that flash flick of the ball or, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, What kind of forearm work did you do? Oh, uh, a lot of holes, like a lot of farmer's holes. I would hold them like 100 pound dumbbells as long as I could and then I'd go straight to like doing some curls and then I'd do some back curls I would do a lot of stuff the roll little, the, that intense thing I, I hate yeah, your it, forms are massive I mean, they, I, mean they, I mean it helps you know like mm-hmm. I don't I don't pull with straps I don't do any of that like even if I'm rack pulling I don't pull with straps you know I, I keep it 100 no belt either what about <laughs> uh, that's some nuts um like mobility like getting into the bench position because i like smaller dudes you see like with really big arches i'm not sure about big guys like i have never really paid attention because i'm always just like god damn that's a lot of weight and i look at that <laughs> i don't really pay attention to some of like the smaller minute things like that so right. for you like what's that like um i have a little bit of an arch it's nothing crazy it's just to keep you a little more more tight yeah, that's it absolutely. i mean to lessen my range of motion i have long arms so like for me to push all the way from down here and i sink like you see, like when I bench, I'm sinking. It's all the way down here, so it's like boom, and then I'm traveling all the way up here. So to get the range of motion down is okay, but for me, I just, it's that arch is for my control and more like um, how should I say it? More uh, comfortability on the bench for me. I feel a lot more comfortable when I'm a little bit more arched. I can really squeeze my my back into it and really wrap my lats around. What are some things that got you to like a 500 pound bench? And then mm-hmm. what are some things that maybe progressed you from like 600 to 700? I'm sure they were different. Accessories, big time. A lot of people neglect necess- accessories and or they just don't take them as serious. Like me, I'm like, cool, I'm done with my primary. Let's get crazy on these accessories because if I can go crazy on the accessories, it's like boom, boom, boom. Like I feel the pump. I'm feeling like every little muscle I can work, I can tweak it a little bit. Because when you have a barbell, you can't do much with it when you tweak things. But like if I'm doing tricep extensions, I can do it one way, I can do it another way. Like one of my favorite things is um, I do tricep extensions with a heavy band and I do it for time. And I, I try to do it for like, you know, 45 seconds. If I can't go anymore, that's fine, but I'm still holding on and I'm trying to push. But I'm really exhausted in that tricep and really building that uh, tendon in there too to make it stronger. You know, a lot of people don't really go hard on accessories, but I think accessory work is, like, so important when you're trying to go through those plateaus. Like, it doesn't matter what type of weight it is, but, 
you really got to go through those with accessories. And that's just big for me. What else has allowed you to kind of, yeah, break through plateaus? Because the weight and the weight you're benching mm -hmm. is something that not many people do. It's a realm that not many men are in. Right. So, I mean, along with going crazy on your accessories, mm -hmm. um, what else do you think allowed you to, like, like Mark asked, like allowed you to keep breaking through into those higher unknown type of numbers um recovery <laughs> big time like really working on stretching um everything i can to really just recover like in the, in the safest way uh a lot of stretching before and after um and uh i think that a lot of people don't think about stretching after because they're so tired and i get it I'm, i've been there too but like there's days i don't stretch after and i feel it it's like oh man but if i stretch after just a little bit maybe 10 minutes I'm good, you know? Like, that's big, big, huge for me. Power Project family, how's it going? Now, we have partnered with Stan Efferding, the Stan Efferding. If you don't know who he is, you better go check it out. But he owns Vertical Meals, which we eat and we love. But one of the big reasons why we love Vertical Meals, and we know that you will too, is so many people talk about how difficult it is to meal prep, how busy my life is, so I don't have time to cook healthy food. I have excuses, so I run to McDonald's because I don't have food at home. Well, <laughs> that's why Vertical Meals is here for you. They have so many amazing meal options, tasty meal options. They have freaking cinnamon rolls, chicken empanadas, steak and eggs, monster mash. They have everything you're going to need. That's why you got to go to Vertical Meals so that you don't have to think about meal prep anymore. Andrew, how do they get it? Yes, that's over at verticaldiet.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Take advantage of this. Make sure you guys get like a week or two or three or four and use promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off that entire order. Uh, links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Yeah, we had uh, Steve Bake on the podcast, and one thing that we found pretty amazing was just his capacity to move. Like, he does a lot of sled work, and then he'll do a lot of accessories and his main movements and stuff. Sled work. Yeah, so do you do anything like that? To, yeah. Yeah, because you're doing full power, right? As opposed to just bench only, where it's like, okay, I'm just going to do this one thing. I guess I, don't, I won't gas out here, but you're doing all three. So what are you doing to help build that, that, that gas tank? Well, since I'm recovering right now from the surgery, I got with knees over toes guy. That's my boy. So uh, we've been doing a lot of like backwards stud work. Like I'm, I'm about tired of it, but when I don't do it, I feel it. You know, it's like, okay, it makes a big difference. So I'm just really trying to build that up and like just little things like that here and there. That's what's getting me through, so. What's your favorite assistance exercise for bench? Oh, man, I got so many, though. So the those uh, pull-downs I like to do. But you know what? I think a lot of people neglect the close grip. Close grip is super important to me just for, like, that sheer, like, working on that. Because everybody fails. Well, I shouldn't say everybody. Most people fail a weight that they can do at the top. So if you're really working that tricep and working that inner pec a little bit, it's really going to help you squeeze. So try it like doing the close grip, even if it's, you don't have to do crazy weight, but really volumizing that, it really helps me out. So I love, I love doing it. How do you like some of the isometric stuff and some of the weird <laughs> stuff that Josh programs? Weird stuff is correct. When you say that <laughs> with Josh, shout out to Josh. You're like, wait, what is that? <laughs> you gotta try to look it up. And then it's yeah. like some old ass video of some guy yes. from like the eighties and like the fucking videos all jacked up. You're like, what exercise is this? I gotta get a VHS to figure out how to <laughs> yeah. do it. Um, you know what? Like, what, the things that he does, like it, it works for a reason. Like, a lot of people try to make up new things here and there, which whatever, cool. But like, I think a lot of people forget like that old stuff still works. Like, you don't have to go like and try to be the you know the next Josh Bryant and like try to th do new things. Like, if it doesn't you know fail, you continue to do it. You know, like especially with him. You know, dealing with him, like he he doesn't play. Like, dude's crazy, but I love it. You know, he, he makes you work hard, and I, I love that, man. So whatever he throws, I'm doing it. Some of those exercises, like pin presses and some of the isometric stuff, um, kind of hurts. You know, like it, it, like when you go oh, to yeah. do it, you're like, fuck, man. Because you're going from zero to, like, whatever the weight is that you're pressing. Mm -hmm. I always had a hard time with it. But when I got through the sticking point of it hurting and I built up, uh, it started to feel better and I got stronger. Yeah. I mean, th people don't understand, like... If you don't just work on the concentric part of the movement. It's You have to really work on the eccentric and the isometric, and I think that's really important with every type of movement we do. And to build that with the isometric, and you know how bad it hurts. Like, even just doing, like, a wall sit is technically an isometric 
movement and nobody likes to do wall sits. Like, come on now, like, oh, let's do a bunch of wall sits, guys. Like, who wants to say that? But I mean, it's it's hard for a reason. And you're really building that, you know, that strength in there. So, you know, I don't I have no problem with doing things like that, especially if it's hard, man. If it's hard, it's it's good. How many days a week right now do you bench? Like what what's um, like the bench, squat, deadlift frequency per week? So I usually bench on a Monday, squat Tuesday, a rest on Wednesday, uh, accessory bench on Thursday, and deadlift on Friday. So deadlifting stays once a week. Yep. And that's how long you been doing that? Since I've been with Josh, so about like three years now. Okay. Yeah. You got some special way to do pull downs, you were saying? Oh, uh, so yeah, my tricep pull down. So like I'll get like a heavy like resistance band, like and I'll put it up on the rack on the Oh, okay, rack. yeah, the yeah, the timed one. Yeah, I do those. That's what I, I like to do those. And I actually do the um, straight arm pull downs with those too. Mm. For my back to get the lats, you know, looking big. Ever have any elbow issues or you've been pretty healthy? No, my elbow's been great. Elbow's been real great. But shoulders? Shoulders been fine too. Pecs? Uh, I used to have problems with pecs, but I have a masseuse and he, he's a killer. So he, he benches four hundred plus. I actually programmed oh, him a little bit, so shout out to T J man. He's he's crazy. <laughs> he uh he makes me cry a little bit, but those <laughs> those deep tissues are something, man, when yeah. you get those done. But I mean, I haven't had pec issues in a while. You know. One of my favorite exercises from uh from Josh was uh, the chain oh. flies. Those are <laughs> those are incredible. Those are great, man. But they yeah. s- oh, they stink, man. They oh. yeah. The chain starts hitting you as you're as you're coming. Yeah, up. you just sound it's so loud and great. It's like, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, it works, man. And when you squeeze at that top too, like you really feel it. Then you're coming down slow, so that centric's really kicking in. It's like, oh my gosh. What's the benefit of chain flies? I've never actually done that. They're, they're, they're incredible. Just, they're just zeroed out, you know. So, like at, when you go to bring it down, where where a lot of people would have uh, mobility issues, yep. uh, the weight's not completely zeroed out, but a lot of the chain weight is on the ground. So, if yep. you had a hundred pounds of chain each side, there might be like 30, 40 pounds at the bottom, mm-hmm. and as you're coming up, you're getting all that weight on you. Get all of it. Yeah, but even for like someone like me, like I would train with Mark all the time, and we would do that. So someone like me, who's nowhere near as strong as Mark, you know, we take one chain off or whatever. But like having almost none of the weight at the bottom and the more at the top, it teaches someone like me how to flex into my pecs. Yeah. It's Ooh. it's kind of yeah, it's it's actually really incredible. But do you mess with other chains and stuff like like kind of like some West Side type of stuff? Um, every once in a while we may do like some like close grip chain work, but yeah. I love bands better. Okay. I love doing bands. I think bands are harder. Um, and, you know, you can really play with the bands more, too. So, and like, like I said, the eccentric part for me, if, I, if I'm doing, like, close grip, I like to really try to work on coming down a little slower and working on that uh, more muscle productivity. Mm-hmm. So, I love, I love bands, man. Like, if I'm a freak I, about bands. If I didn't want anybody to work out with me for the day, I would take our purple bands that we have at the gym, like uh-huh. the light band. <laughs> And I would put that on the bench, and like once somebody walked over and tried that, they'd get like pinned with the with the band. They're like, "Fuck this!" It was brutal. Big bully. Yeah, right. Sometimes you got to do that, right? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta set people in their place, right? You know, I I don't think we mentioned this on this episode yet. We were talking about it beforehand, but mm-hmm. the fact that you got your nutrition starting like handled last year, mm-hmm. you mentioned that you've been actually gaining muscle and losing body fat yeah. pretty rapidly because your nutrition's uh, where it needs I saw to be. him here last year. He looks totally different. Feel different. You look amazing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. He's you technically are getting newbie gains, bro, and you're fourth in the world with newbie gains. <laughs> some like that. Some, yeah. some like yeah. some like you yeah. know what I mean? Because like, it, so that's why that's why you're so crazy to me because I'm just like, give this like <laughs> two to three more years where things like really just flesh out. Yeah. It's gonna be something we haven't seen. That's All I got like wild. five more years and I'm done. So yeah, I'm gonna retire at 35. Why 35? Uh, well, I got a son, man, and I not gonna. I'm not gonna be 430 pounds all my life. He needs me around, so mm-hmm. he's more important than powerlifting. But that's why I gotta work on other endeavors after powerlifting. And it's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna set my legacy before I turn 35, and you know, kick some butt, and then I'll retire and kick it. You know, mm-hmm. and just do some other things. Yeah, we were talking. I think <clears throat> uh, before we started, and we talked about a potential 900 pound squat. Mm-hmm. Seven, mid seven bench and a nine hundred pound pull in competition. That's right. I don't think anybody's ever done. Well, I guess Daniel Bell has done a thousand. And I don't know. I don't think he pulled nine. So I don't even know if there's a. I can't even think of a nine and a nine. Nine hundred pound squat, nine hundred pound deadlift. I guess I, there's probably a couple guys. Maybe there was one. 
uh, Dylan from Australia, I believe. Mm. He did it in raps, and that was at, at the Arnold like three years ago. I believe he did a thousand. He was the first person to and have a seven hundred pound bench, like an all time, yeah. nearly a damn near 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 all time world record bench, sitting in the middle of that. That's what we want. <laughs> it's pretty insane. I mean, I'm, I'm moving more weight, like even just doing full power. So it's like I have no excuse to go back to bench only. So I might do a bench only meet here in the summer, just because I'm still healing. But I just miss competition. So. Was uh, that eight hundred pound bench? Was that real? The one that we saw on Instagram. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? Daniel Zamani's? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the guy's name. The one I was showing you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so what, we, what do you think about that? He's like a okay. foreign guy, I believe. Okay, mm -hmm. Daniel, he seems real nice. And it's not real until you do it in competition. That's all I'm going to tell you. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. I, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and think that it's fake and whatnot. I mean, people have their speculations, but, you know, out of respect, I'm going to give that man his chance to... Do it in competition, yeah. at a real competition, you know, nothing like not an exhibition. Like come head to head, you know, over here, and we go over there. I love to see it. If it's real, it's real. That's cool. It's cool for the sport. In, um, I think Julius is going to get it first, though. Mm. Yeah, he's been chasing it down for a long time. And yeah. He's been super close. I've been for a chasing long time. on him too. I told him, I said, bro, you better get it before we get to fighting. I'm tired <laughs> of lifting off for you, bro. That's, that's, that's a heavy lift off, man. Like I'm over here, like. <sighs> Take some nose torque and get some truck, and I'm like getting into it. It's it's crazy, lifting off 700 pounds and then 800 pounds for him is just ridiculous. Yeah, 800 pound raw bench. I mean, it was just maybe six, seven years ago that uh, Eric Spoto kind of came out from the shadows Eric and, and and broke Mendelssohn's record that sat there for 10 years. Yeah, and that was a 716 bench that he did. Mm -hmm. And then I think later he did like seven, then Kirill Serkev, and then they went mm -hmm. back and forth, and then big Kirill. Shout out to Kirill too, man. Those are good people, man. That's, that's a lineup right there. <laughs> it's nuts to see where the lifts have gone. Everybody, man, like you know, I I don't want to give him too much credit because he's got a big head right now. But my boy John Hack, like, look at what he's doing, man. He's yeah. how much is he weighing? He's pulling nine hundred pounds. Making me Doesn't mad. <laughs> like, bro, like, you don't weigh nearly as much as I do, and you're about to try to out total me. We're going to have to fight. <laughs> like, yeah, it's making sense. No, it doesn't, man. He He's... plays a lot of video games, too. Yes, bro. I, I don't even have time for video games right now. I'm, I'm still stuck on UFC 4 right now, trying to. I'm a, I'm a champion right now in my game, but I'm, I can't even get to it right now. I'm so busy. Can, I haven't played video games in a while can you make your own player on there and shit yeah, oh, yeah I'm, I'm oh, Thomas Davis the champion I'm a heavyweight <laughs> I actually have a six pack on the game so I, I mean nice. you know I gotta get to pick your theme music and everything yeah like I walk do. out music yeah. oh I love it. what is it you um, <laughs> uh, it's a song called Bombs by Fabulous it's real, it's real dope that's like you know the the Chicago Bulls the, 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 oh yeah yeah he has that sample <laughs> in it so it's like you know it, it's it's right and you're shredded right I'm shredded yeah. dude. He's, yeah. he's like he's like 3% body fat he's a UFC <laughs> fighter like come on now and then all does, natty though and then does your your fighter have like a cool nickname on there uh the shotgun okay because yeah. yeah. because when um uh, Bruce Buffer is like announcing your fighter and stuff. He'll use just the nickname mm -hmm. and get you all fired up. Yeah, I was I was on UFC four like, you know, like a year ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm like <laughs> almost at my longevity. Like I'm almost there. Like I've I've had how many <laughs> tile defenses? Like, <laughs> it's That's ridiculous. So I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I cheat a little bit. Like when, if I'm about to get beat, like you I'll quit. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll quit the game. You know, I, do it. I do it all no. the time, bro. Dude, like, I, I've <laughs> I've lost the title and I was like, oh shit, and like I'll just turn uh, I'll literally turn the whole thing off and uh, it doesn't save. So. So like oh, I, you got you good, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Pull the plug. But there, there is a grind to get that damn title because you got to do all the shit that UFC fighters have to do out of the cage. Yeah, they did a good job with that. It was, it was I like it, man. Yeah, it's fun. They're, they're fighting tonight too. With, um, oh yeah, yes. of all and, uh, who you got? Come on, man, Masvidal, Masvidal. Masvidal bro. He, yeah. he 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 went up with he was he came up when Kimbo was coming up doing that yep. street fighter stuff. Man, I remember seeing him. I'm like, that's him now. Like, it's crazy. I heard they're doing a movie on Kimbo Slice. They are. Yeah. They that's should. Dude, that's they should do a movie on him, man. He was, he was great. I that mean, was kind of scary watching that shit back in the day. Bro, I, I was like, man. I was always like, what's going to happen? The, the websites you would see that on, because before it was on YouTube, yeah. it was like this weird like sketch of something. Like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to get a virus. Is this like LimeWire? Yep. You know, like, uh, it's crazy. I messed up a lot of computers in LimeWire. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't we, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> remember, um, but M'Baku, you know the guy Black M'Baku from Black Panther? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be playing to, uh, Kimbo Slice. Really? Yeah. 
Ooh, that's that gonna be dope. big. Yeah, he's, he's like six, six four. Yeah, yeah, he's a big boy. Dude, I remember like some of the fights. Like he would like pop dudes, dude's eyes out of yeah, the he socket. Yeah, that one dude's eye out of that the ball, socket. dude. I remember yeah. that shit. That and terrified. And the that's fuck why. Out of me. <laughs> that's why they made Mossberg. Uh, God, yeah, <laughs> you can't fight dudes. You like can't him. stop that uh, guy. Uh, <laughs> oh, what's Mossberg? Shotgun. Shotgun. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You can't fight that dude. I, I'm not fighting him, nah. And that better be more than just a fuck shot. I'll, I will snitch on him. I'm not even gonna snitch. <laughs> He's trying to fight me, officer. <laughs> you better get him. He gonna punch my eye out. Put me on YouTube. Cool you on think uh, maybe you'll do some MMA just uh, for training or something like that when you're you done? You know what? I've done a little bit of jujitsu actually. Oh, I, I love to roll. Like that was probably my favorite type of cardio. That's like it's cool. Like you know, you you on the floor and you're just being loose. I made the mistake of trying to breathe too hard, and I would I, I'd be in the first like thirty seconds. I'm like, <gasps> like I'm oh my god, I'm about to get choked out or get tapped out. But like I learned how to breathe through that, and it's like it's so cool. It's so fluent. Yeah. I love that stuff, man. It's cool. Like I I hit the bag every once in a while too. Like I got to keep my hands right because I I still bounce every once in a while, and I do security for you know rappers or bands that come to town. So like I, I make sure I keep in shape. But oh, that's you. Know. you. He always like who that who's that huge motherfucker with this guy? That's Sometimes, you. yeah. Like I said, I work for Shine Down. I work for uh, oh man, uh, this is a rapper called Sada Baby. He's kind of new. Uh, who else? I worked for Twister before. Oh, wow. I'm actually might be shooting with Twister one of these days. He he shoots. Uh, my nutritionist actually shout out to Chev. Her boyfriend's a professional shooter. And uh, he shoots with Twister, so wow. I'm like you gotta get me hooked up, bro. I want to shoot. Oh, I can't. I can't rap with the guy, but let me shoot with the guy. You know, yeah. I shoot. You know, so I, I work with a lot of people, so it's, it's fun stuff. Yeah, you said um, like you had protein in your car, protein everywhere, and protein everywhere. in your office when you're getting work done. What does uh, the work look like in that office? So I'm a security officer, or not officer, but guard at a high school. So okay. I just make sure kids go to class and. Talk to kids here and there, and I'm not hearing it all all day. Make sure they ain't fighting. How old are they? High school. So I have, we have sophomores through uh, seniors. Mm. So we have a, we just merged the two schools in that town. So we have like a you know they think that you know there's still rivalry. It's like no, you guys are together now. Be friends. So right. But it's 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 a cool job. I like it. It's better than my old job being a correctional officer. So. I definitely enjoy it. Yeah, was that for a big like prison jail? Or? We it was the second biggest uh, jail in the state of Indiana, so Elkhart, Indiana. Shit. Yeah, and I was there for five and a half years, man, and it was not. I mean, I I enjoyed I enjoyed the inmates, man. Like they were funny, like <laughs> they were cool. Like, I, I still talk to some of them. Like I, I I love to see like because they'll come up to me, hey, Mister Davis, I'm doing well. Like I'm I love that, man. Like I. I I'm no, I'm no better than nobody. So like I've, I've been around the block, and I just never got caught doing the stupid stuff I did. And I'm, I'm, I'm I love to see their stories and them doing better. We had somebody on recently, and they they did some time, and they were like talking about how they would get in conversation with like other inmates, mm-hmm. and they'd be like, "Wow, that's a really nice guy." And then they'd be like, "Oh shit, I forgot what he's in for." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he stabbed it. About that old lady. <laughs> he's a nice dude though. He, he, <laughs> he ain't that bad of a guy. <laughs> Actually, a guy uh, who cuts my hair every once in a while, he, he just got out for a murder. He he, uh, he had a murder charge, and he was young. You know, he did it when he was young, and, you know, he didn't know what he was doing. But, I mean, he's got his own barbershop, and he's making it well, man. It's it's, it's good to see that. It's, I mean, I know it's hard for them to come back out from that, but to see, you see some guys that can make it and they're successful after prison, you know, like, that's that's great. You know, I think some people, um, when when they hear that, they be like, "Oh, that's like that individual is evil or whatever." But you don't understand where some somebody came from. Yep. When so, when they when something's around you so much, a lifestyle is normal. Like like people that live in, in, in the suburbs cannot understand or fathom that idea. Exactly. Because that's not even around them. But when it's what you see every single day, correct, it's not foreign to you. Exactly. And that's a big disconnect and. I think that's that's why I'm glad I you know I was from where I was from, but I also got to learn people from Catholic school because I went to school with uh, uh, Charlie Weiss. You know his he was the head football coach in Notre Dame for a while, and then he was he did with some stuff with NFL too, and the University of Florida. But I went to school with his son. Like I went to school with some rich kids, and you know, and I got to learn that and like see how they operated too, and like so I got the best of both worlds. Essentially, and I think that's I think that's where people fail, man. They're too scared to go out of that boundary. I mean, I was scared too, but I mean, I had no choice, and I I, I did it. And like now, I kind of understand both sides a little bit. You do any uh, lifting uh, exhibitions or speaking engagements at like the high school or anything like local in your area? Um, 
Not really, man. I, I'm so busy. Like, I would love to, but, like, I, I have people all the time, like, hey, can I come lift with you? That's that's what I get. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, hey, you know, you know can I, I'm going to come get strong with you and do this. Uh, I'm like, all right, cool. I, I tell people when I'm at the gym, and, like, they don't they do not do anything. But mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've spoken to one high school that wasn't too far from me, and I, I did that for a little while. And, I mean, I'm, I'm always up to doing that. I just, you know, busy. That'd be great. Super um, busy. So I was going to ask, um, with, like, your, your past and all the things you've been through, mm-hmm. um, losing, you know, family, uh, and then where you are now, do you have any bad days ever? I mean, everybody has bad days, mm-hmm. but I think it's how you make it, too. Like, I can have a bad day and, you know, whatever, that's fine, but at the same time, like, tomorrow's going to be a different day. You know, cool, I had a bad day yesterday, I'll get through it, it's going to end, you know. It's like life, man. People are like, oh, I had to buy a bad life. Well, you know what? You know, that's how it is sometimes. But, I mean, it's not always all bad. Not everything is all bad. You can you can turn a lot of bad things into positives if you look at it a different way. So, I always, I always try to do that, man. Yeah, it's well, very normal to have ups and downs, yeah. right? But then if the, it's just things are always down, then I think you have to. Or if things are, I mean, if things are like, uh, just if there's not like a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of exciting things to like look forward to. Like mm-hmm. you, you got to like make things exciting. You got to you got to yeah. work. You got to work for things. And if you're kind of down in the dumps for long periods of time, then you got to kind of examine it a bit. Maybe ask a friend, or maybe go seek some therapy, or right. Just f- figure out a way to look within yourself. Correct. Yeah, I think that's a lot of things. It's like people have to understand. They get to if things aren't always going right, or something's always wrong. It may be you. It's <laughs> your perspective. You know, maybe you should change it. Real quick question, because you're, you're, you're fourth all time in total for uh, sleeves, but what is your bench? Like all time, just your bench, where are you at? 716. 716, but like where does that rank? Just the bench? Oh, that bench, number four all time too. Number four all time yeah. too, okay. So what are the lifts ahead of you, the, the, the bench numbers um, that are ahead of you? Eric Spoto, 722, uh, Kirill at uh, 738, right? And then Sounds Julius right. at 781. Yeah, pissed at him. It's a big, big gap. It's so, <laughs> it's so wild that you two, though, you two are training partners. That's like, my boy, man. That's my boy. And, and you guys are like on this list of the greatest of all time in a specific sport, mm-hmm. and you two are here at the same time. Yeah. Like, the really cool aspect of that is that you two can literally just push each other to get to those levels. And mm-hmm. it might be you two that are one and two, who knows which one, mm-hmm. but it's going to be you two. Yeah. It's fun, man. I, I love it. Like, people, this is one thing I always hated, too, and I'm, I'm glad to say this. Like, that's my brother. Like, people are like, oh, you guys are in competition, or they try to compare us all the mm-hmm. time. Like, I'm not Julius Maddox. That's my brother. Like, he does what he does. I'm Thomas Davis. You know, he, he's going for the 800, and I want him to smoke it. I want him to go past it if he wants to. That's my brother. Whatever he does, I'm going to support him. Mm-hmm. Just like he supports me. You know, we support each other. We're brothers. I don't want to be compared to him. Cause he's his own guy. He's he's in his own lane. He's great. I'm trying to be great. You know, that's that's how it is. So, I, I love being able to be around somebody like him. That's got his head on his shoulders. And he's about it. You know, you know, you, you, and you guys know. But training with different people, a lot of guys really aren't about it. You know, mm-hmm. when it gets hard, it's, they're really not about that that grittiness. It's like, eh, I can't train with you no more. Mm-hmm. But him, we can get it in all day. Yeah, and how much better do you guys make each other? Way better. Yeah. Way better. Like we we try to plan on training with each other all the time. He actually has one of his benches, his ghost benches at our gym, so that he's he's comfortable because he's bougie like that. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to my boy, but he's bougie like that. He's got a bench at our gym and another guy's gym. Like he he's he's comfortable wherever he's going. So but we push him, man. So yeah. I want him to be the best, man. I want him to achieve his goals just as much as I want to mine. That's where you got to mess with him. Be like, oh, yeah, we're using this bar for today. He'll be like, <laughs> just looking at it like all weird the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to put his bench away, put it somewhere in the back room. So we're going to use it. these other plates for today. He's just going to be like tripping the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he would, too. <laughs> the 781 bench, and the next guy has like a 733 or something you said, right? It was 738 with Kirill. Yeah, so uh-huh. that's, an, that's an insane... That's an insane gap. I would go as far to say like that might be the biggest gap in all of sports when it comes to all time world records. I think so too. Like percentage wise, like I don't know, I'm suck at math, but I, someone could probably figure it out. Right. 
um, like whatever Hussein Bolt has in the hundred. You know, the next closest guy well, is a lot closer than that gap that Julius Maddox has right. created. Right, and that, that's a good example. Like with Usain Bolt, like it'd be him, and then everybody else. You know, He'd like, have to run probably like a couple hundreds of a second faster, even yep. than what he already did, to be comparable to what Julius Maddox has done to the previous records. Exactly, and I mean that's great. It's so good for the sport. Like people, you know, I know they doubted him when he was going for seven. You know, <laughs> smoked it. Now he does seven for like. Five reps. <laughs> Pause. Are you serious? Yeah, I think that's his best. I think that's his best set. It was like 700 for five. You guys get pretty frustrated with each other, too? I'm sure you get kind of like mad at each other a bit here and we're there. Like, like, we're like the cool like cousin brothers. Like we, we really don't get mad at each other. Like we, we get on each other when we need to, but like for the most part, it's all love, man. And I mean, we... I definitely get on him about his diet sometimes. He gets on me about mine. He's like, what, what are you eating there, big boy? And I'm like, don't worry about what I'm eating. Right like, you worry about you. And, you know, we're, we're I said cool I'm like starting that. on Monday. <laughs> yeah. You said that six that is weeks ago. Classic. Oh, my God. That's so classic. Start Monday. Start Monday. Start Monday. You know what? Whatever. You start whenever you start, but make sure you start. Ha- <laughs> start have, on Monday. Have you two, since you train together, like, what have you seen in him that maybe you gave him some advice on bench or maybe what has he seen on you that he gave you some advice on bench? Because I feel like you guys are at a level where there's there's trade secrets that you guys are trading with each other that just mm-hmm. people don't understand. Um, actually, with him, I was the one who, and he'll tell you, like, I, I take full credit for this. I helped him with his form because I know you guys have probably seen his, like, earlier videos when he before he even really was going for seven. Like, he'd be doing, like, 680 and his foot would go out. Like and still press six eight. Like who does that? Like mm-hmm. it was weird to see it. He was completely flat. You know he really had no form. And I, I you know I worked with him on that, and we still work on it. Like now, like his form is a lot better. Um, oh, I'm trying to work on getting his hips a little bit more opened up, so he can get a little bit more torque wow. under him, so he can get a little bit of a better arch. But I mean, like I mean, I, I helped him with his form a little bit, and like that little bit took off, but. The fact that he was able to hit 680, 700, and his foot slipping. Like, you're, you're not even completely, like, on the bench, bro. Like, you're, you're slipping off, and you're still able to push it up. Yeah. Like, who are you? Like, <laughs> yeah, Thor? No like, sense. who are you? <laughs> Hulk? No He's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think it's going to take to get uh, powerlifting more mainstream? Um, Us doing what we do and uh, other people seeing it and, like, like this idea with the car thing, like, you know, just little things like that. Like, I just think that's the, like the biggest thing, like really showing that we are athletes, like no matter what. I know in other countries, like probably there's more power, like, you know, they're more popular over there, but like we are athletes too. Like we bang, we do what we do. And like, we really put time and effort into it. And what we do is really cool. It's really amazing. Were you offended by the video that Julius put up the other day when he ran the stairs and said it's the he's the fastest 400 pound man on earth no because he knows he's lying <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows especially when i'm healed up i would you smoke guys him have in to race. have a race yeah i would smoke him in a race that's my boy but he knows what time it is he he's 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 the bench king but i'm i'm like the athlete still like i, mm-hmm. I still got it we actually we're supposed to be playing basketball soon too Ooh, one-on-one good. basketball so that'd be the, like the biggest one-on-one you've ever seen yeah two 400 pounders <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's gonna be crazy are either one of you any good <laughs> I think I'm pretty good. Yeah, I used to be able to dunk too. Damn, I did. Yeah, when I'm in high school, we saw a video more recently. Of Mark Henry doing a, a dunk oh, in the basketball. Yes, at that little contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I can. Before I got hurt, I could still grab rim. So I know for a fact, like if I continue to drop this body fat and I continue to get stronger in these legs, I'll be able to dunk again. So the work from these over toes guys going to get you right too. Bro, he, like it, it's, it's going to make a play. Mm-hmm. All these sled drags and the 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 the, the squats and the, I'm mm. like, bro, like. Yeah. You're killing me, but it's working though. Mm-hmm. It's working. I'm cool with it. I like yeah. the hard work. How much longer that knee heals up? I'm actually Doc said I'm 100 percent healed, but I'm just really trying to continue to strengthen it as much as I can. Like I don't want to go stupid crazy yet, but like I just want to continue to strengthen it, get good hypertrophy going through my legs because I got to build up to that 900, you know, squat. So I got to do whatever I can to get stronger. So you know, right now it's just a you know testing the waters, playing around. And just getting strong right now. And you want to compete in like September or something like that, you were yeah, saying, September. right? September. I might do a bench only. And if I do the bench only, the goal is to put myself at number two all time on bench. So that would be ideal, I think. Uh, we'll What's see. the number you're aiming for? 
it, it would. It, so I'm weird. I don't like to chip. I think chip is like eh. If I'm a, if I'm a break through, if I'm a, you know move you, I'm gonna move you. So I want to do. Uh, I think it's in kilo 742 maybe after 738. I don't know. 744, kilo. yeah. 744. We can do it. So that would be the number in mind. Mm-hmm. Fucking monster. That'll work, man. A- any lifting exhibitions while you're here? Or are you just with uh, these couple companies um, hanging at the booth? Me and Julius throwing a lifting party at Pinnacle. We're going to be on our overalls because that's our thing. You know, we do the overall thing. We, we like a tag like, team. Bro, we do WWE the, champions. The, the, the black bushwhackers. <laughs> <laughs> you know the bushwhackers? <laughs> oh, yeah. they, they, they didn't play, man. I, they were crazy. <laughs> they were throwing their arms up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you see the video. Of the, uh, they were throwing a, a small person. Right? Yeah. I, I don't know. What <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> good, 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 good words with that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that was, that was, that was a small person. Good. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see the video? <laughs> yeah, I did. You're, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you can't, yeah. you can't throw them nearly as far as you'd think. <laughs> no, I, I mean I wanted to, but I'm like I don't, I don't trust it, you know. <laughs> but he was all for it, and I'm like, man. But you know what? Actually, it's weird you say that. I had a message from a guy, and he was a powerlifter, and he also was small too. And he was like, you know, I respect you and everything, uh, but you know, um, what you did was kind of like Uh-oh. whatever. And I, I kind of felt bad. And you know, I apologize to him. You know, but it's like little things like that. You don't realize like it may offend somebody. Right, right. Like right. people, and, and I, I'm not saying that he was sensitive, but people are a little bit more sensitive nowadays. And like yeah. you kind of got to watch what you say, you know, and, and watch what you do, and you know, little things like that. So if anybody was offended by that video, I, I apologize. But it was all fun and games. And the guy, the him. guy said he like he looked like he enjoyed it. Oh, bro, he he wants to do more stuff like that. But I'm, <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to decline now. I got. Yeah. You know, I don't want to piss nobody off. You know, I don't want you know a bunch of small people coming and whoop me. You know, I don't want that, bro. I, got, I, I don't want none of that smoke. I'm, I want to be with peace with everybody, man. That's it. What do some of the family members uh, think of of your lifting and what you've been doing? You know what? I, it's crazy. Like my family, like loves it, bro. Like they they love what I do, and they just they're just so proud of me, and I'm I'm just so thankful that I can bring that joy to them because my family, like a lot of them, was they sang and did stuff like that, mm-hmm. but like. For me to do what I'm doing, it was like, you know, this, this dude's a bad boy. Like, we got to make sure we make extra food when he comes around. Does anyone else in your family have, like, because, like, this, I mean, your genetics or something. Like, you obviously have put in a crazy amount of work for decades, but mm-hmm. your genes play a part. Does anyone else in the family have some type of skill like this? Not like this. No, I, I my Uncle James on my mom's side, he's like a, he was in the Navy, and he's just like a, a strong country boy like when I shake his hand it's like it hurts I love my Uncle James but I'm like bro I don't like shaking your hand no more <laughs> dog like I gotta lift tomorrow like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean as far as like this nah yeah. so it's just been me man yeah uh, holds your son he'll be two uh, um, May 25th or March 25th sorry this, this, this month mm-hmm. yeah, yeah my, my son just turned one so we're right at the you know same age and yeah my wife's sending me videos and stuff but um yeah. Do you have him watch you lift and all that stuff? Because I try oh, yeah. my best to bring my son around it all the time, uh-huh. and now he's like goes for the cable machine. And he does rows by himself, <laughs> which is the best feeling ever. But that's great. Yeah. So well, that's cool. Then that answers that. So you have him around like the, like the gym and everything. He comes over like sometimes, but I actually I bought because I knew it was a boy, and I bought uh, a little Fisher Price bench press set. You know, that's how we announced that we were pregnant. So I'm like, you know, here, you know, this. I know he was gonna he's gonna do some stuff like that. He he tries to lift up the the uh, what's the, the dishwasher thing and yeah, like yeah. he's deadlifting. I'm like, bro, you're crazy. And he, he does this thing now where he's like muscles. Like, yes, let's go there. Let's flex. Love that. Let's do that. You know, I'm I'm all for it, man. I love I love being a dad. That's like probably my my favorite thing now, man. Like power doing is my favorite thing, but being a dad is by far my favorite thing. Got any good TV shows to recommend to us? We like to waste time. Oh, man, TV shows. So, <laughs> honestly, I haven't been watching anything new. I was going to start the, the show Euphoria. Heard that's really good on HBO. It's good. That everybody told I've, I've been told it's really good. So, um, I, I'm going to start that. But I'm just watching a lot of, like, old WWF on Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of old, like, stuff. The Rock like, back in the day and Stone Cold. And oh, my gosh. <laughs> Funny story. So I'm talking to a couple of teachers about the about the rock. Oh my! I love the rock. I love. It. Will he be at the arm? I'm like, no, he, he doesn't come out. He's too cool for that. But um, you know, they're like, well, is he, is he all natural? And I'm just, and, I, and I show them a picture of his jawline, like when he like back in like 2000, and I show them a picture of him now. And I'm like, 
You gotta look at it. just. I show him like you know he, he's he's doing a little bit. He's doing his thing, but he's still a rock. He's still a good guy, you know. Yeah. You know he's <laughs> back in the day he was something though. He was a very charismatic guy, but he was an athlete. Like people don't understand, like to be a wrestler, you have to be a dog athlete. Oh, the way he moved in the ring was insane. It was nuts, man. He, he, as big as he was, he could move that way, mm-hmm. and like being on the road, like you know. Like being on the road, like mm-hmm. doing that, having to train, having to eat, whatever you guys are doing, like that's hard. Like and for years and like however long you guys are doing that, like power to you. Stone Cold and The Rock, they would wrestle each other for like forty five minutes. Yeah, and it was just like pretty much. I mean, they they, they take breaks and stuff, and they play to the crowd and they get these little rests here and there. But yeah, it's it's not like an MMA fight, but it's damn near close to it. It's very close. I mean, you're you're going all the time. You're selling all those, you know, bumps and whatnot. And The Rock was the best at selling yeah. Stone Cold Stunners. Like, he would flip all the way. Oh, yeah. the way. Like, I used to love that stuff, man, as a kid. And that's, that's what inspired me. Like, I used to love watching uh, the Road Warriors. Oh, those yeah. Those are my guys, man. Like, oh, man. They did a bench competition. You ever see that one? Yeah, I did see it. <laughs> yeah, bench, like, I don't know. They put, like, 500 on I, I don't know if it was real or whatever, but he did you a know what? bunch well, of reps. Back then, I'd believe it. Yeah, same For thing. sure, yeah. back then. Actually, I did a podcast with, uh, what was his name, Ryback. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did one with him a couple of years, about a year ago, two years ago. He's, he's a crazy freak athlete, too. Right. He's huge. Yeah. Uh, any aspirations outside of powerlifting? Like, I, I don't know, like, you were talking about WWE, but mm-hmm. you have connections with some pretty high-level, like, uh, musicians and stuff. So whether it be, like, I don't know, acting or ending up in, like. I would love to do any of that stuff, yeah. man. Honestly, whatever's going to put me in a better position for me and my boy. Mm-hmm. That'd be great, but I actually my my big thing I want to open up a gym, and I think me and Julius want to do it jointly. Ooh. And if we open up a gym and we want we want to do it in Texas, I think oh, right man. by where Josh is at, big facility, but like serious. But I think that's what we want to do. That'd be amazing. That'd be fucking amazing. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the goal to have my own gym, but I want it to be serious, and I want it to be like you know. You're you're a dog if you're here. Like I, I, I don't I don't want to neglect anybody. Like anybody can come, but if you're here, you're working. You know, like if you're you know a, a teenager to like a seven year old woman, like I want you to come here and work. I want you to do things you've never done before. You know, I want that. I want people to understand like how important it is to be in shape and be healthy. Like I mean, I may not look it, but I'm my blood work and everything else tells me you know different. I've survived COVID twice. You know, I'm mm-hmm. cool. So. Yeah, you had it twice. I had it twice, and I'm I'm overweight. I got high blood pressure. Well, it's, it's a lot better now. I probably don't need to be on medicine anymore. And I have asthma, and I, I survived it twice. Didn't have to go to the hospital or nothing. Wow. Took my vitamins, exercised, and prayed, man. That's that's it. And ate good. Yeah, you know. Josh Bryant's training is uh, really really brutal. Was it hard for you to adapt to it, or were you already training like a maniac? Um. I had a uh, the coach I had before, like he was okay, and we we trained decent, but like Josh was a totally different animal, man. But it, it got me to like really tap into that like old football mentality, like you know, just work, just get through it, get through it, get through it. And once I got through the first like month or so, I was okay. But that first month was like, like you don't need to do this. Like <laughs> I'm looking There's at my phone. Eight like, exercises on here. You're like, how am I gonna get to this? And the first one's gonna take me an hour. You're like, what the fuck? Yes, and that's that's what it is. But it's like. If you want to do it, you're going to do it. And I mean, I haven't seen anybody that can't do anything through him. So he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he does a great job. Everything's tracked, even your yes. rest intervals. Yes. Which that was hard for me to uh, adapt to thing. in the beginning. And yeah. then also just the, the frequency. You know, I was telling you earlier that it kind of hurt. I was like, dude, I think I'm going backwards. He's like, wait, what were you doing before? And then so we had to. We had to like ease into it a lot more. He's like, "Well, I've never really dealt with someone who lifts as little as you." Yeah, <laughs> and he just meant like frequency wise, because I would lift heavy like every other week. Right, but that I mean, it works. Like what he's doing, yeah. it, it it it's hard. But if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't hard, everybody would be doing it. Like everybody would be, you know, squatting X, Y, and Z and benching whatever or doing whatever they can. But I mean, he's got you know powerlifters, but then he has that guy Tom from like Australia. I don't know his last name, but He's like, like a Terminator, but he's he's a, in a human form. Like he's nuts. Like he he does these farmer walks, and he's just like a big like six foot, I think eight guy. You have to look him up, dude. Like he's he's what's he on nuts. IG? Do you know? Oh, uh, I don't know. If you look at 
Josh posts his stuff all the time. Is I know his first, his first name is Tom. You can't miss him. He's like a big like you have farm a, boy. Are you gas station ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always gas station ready, bro. I ain't, wherever I'm going, I'm gas station ready. Yeah, you were built for that being from the streets, right? I'm I'm ready for whatever, bro. I don't I don't play around. That's I, Josh is funny with that stuff. He, bro, he he's like a nerd, but he's funny. You know, he's, like he is. Funny, yeah. he's, a, he's a goofy dude, man, but he knows his stuff. And he's extremely athletic too, bro. He's. What's He's, what's Josh's IG? It's uh, Jailhouse Strong. Jailhouse, that's what Jailhouse it is. Strong, Him yeah. and his uh, brother. His brother, I think, was a shot putter mm-hmm. at USC. And uh, this is like a million years ago, basically. This is before the 2000s. I don't even remember like what website or how I saw it, but I used to see his brother uh, demonstrating like box jumps. He'd have weights in his hands. Mm-hmm. And um, the Bryant brothers, I was always kind of watching both of them. Right. And, and just seeing these huge athletes were able to be super explosive in these like broad jumps and super box explosive. jumps and i was like and sprints yes and they were the only guys talking about that kind of stuff back then and they were still i think josh was still squatting like mid sevens you know raw and i the uh apf senior nationals that i competed at uh that's in bigger stronger faster where i benched the 705 mm-hmm. josh bryant was in that lineup uh in in the squat and he was the only guy that squatted raw. And he just, I think he just had some wraps on in the belt. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is in there like double ply canvas suit, but he was right. so strong. Yeah. He was competing with the best in the world mm-hmm. that were wearing multiple layers of stuff that assist you to lift more weight. Josh is a freak. <laughs> yeah. But he's so smart, man. Like just to hear him talk, like that's what I love about the sport. Like you've learned so much about like different like ways of training and like how this guy trains like why was he making this guy do this and why is he doing that like you learn so much from so many people especially from josh you know i just love to pick people's brain like even ed too man like if you sit there and talk with ed you know his crazy ass like you can learn so much from him he may try to stab you with his little bitty knife he has but you know he loves doing that bro he don't play he don't play man he grab you he'll Twist you around, it's like, bro, you're like five foot eight. Like you're trying to beat me up. Bro. He'll, he'll he'll take the knife to your throat and be like, see, you're not ready. Like, you got to protect <laughs> yeah. yourself. That you left yourself wide open. My it's daughter's like, like that guy hit me so hard when he was over our house. <laughs> I'm like, he did. I'm like, damn. <laughs> he doesn't play, man. But I mean, like, just picking brains of the people like that, man. Like even yourself, like you guys know so much. Like I listen to a lot of podcast stuff you guys do, like. I was talking to my boy on the way here, like about the semen retention thing, because he's like, "Yeah, because I do that. I do that a week before, yeah. but I think this next Ooh. when I come back, I think I'm gonna try to do two weeks before." And just like, "You're gonna be angry." Bro, I, I, I get that, <laughs> way. And, it's, and it's cool. Though. I'm fine with that because like, I'm way more aggressive and I, I feel mm-hmm. more explosive because mm-hmm. I'm. It's everything just in there, and I'm just like, you know, I'm ready it's to go. Explosive locked is in. correct, bro. I'm locked in. <laughs> it's it's real, legit. yeah. It, but it works though. Like people are like, oh, that's a myth. Like. No, nah, like, and I think a lot of it has to do with the discipline of it, too. Like, the mind thing of discipline, like, I think it's just so great. Like, maybe not necessarily all the physical, but the, the discipline part is mm-hmm. great for you. Yeah, Andre, he told me that he did it for three months. And I was like, three months? And then he was like, you know, he said it in Russian. And then it, it got translated to me. He was like, well, maybe two months. And then it got translated <laughs> down about four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You try to lie to you. you know, like, I, I had a couple mishaps, but you know. <laughs> so actually, okay. Now I'm, I'm kind of curious. Uh-huh. What what else do you do? Like, let's say a competition is coming up in in two weeks. Uh-huh. So what's your mental preparation? What's your physical preparation? Like, what's going on in your head? How do you prepare? Well, here I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I, I do everything probably about ten or twelve weeks out. Okay. So um, I do. No alcohol, no tobacco. I like to do cigars every once in a while. That's my thing. Obviously, I like to drink a little bit. It's fine, but I do nothing of the sort. Ten weeks out, or twelve weeks out. Um, I try to really limit my um, free time and just really focus on training. I try to rest more if possible. Uh, obviously, the eating's different. Uh, maybe play with a little bit, you know, some supplements here and there. You know, here and there, you know, that's what I'm. I'm starting to do now. Uh, I did last last time, and you know, we're gonna we turn up, and then obviously the two weeks or the week before, nothing, nothing on the source sexually, and I just I stay focused, man. And I'm just I'm really I I start to obsess about the numbers. Like I'll I have a book where I'll write my like what I want to total. Like I'll write that out 
Like, I, just, I keep writing it, keep writing it, keep writing it. And, like, I'm just, like, I, I obsess about it. If I don't obsess about it, I'm not going to do it. So if I obsess about this, like, total or obsess about how fast I want this to go, it's going to go for me. So I think that's a lot of things, too. Like, when you're when you're at that level and you really want to be great and you want to break these world records, you have to obsess about it because it's not anything normal anyway. Like, it, you're, you're, you've surpassed that normal spot. And you have to go to, like, that weird, like, dark spot to where it's, like, all right, I'm, I'm thinking about this every day, all day, every day. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't phase me. It just keeps me focused. So, like, when I want to cheat on my on my meals, like, uh, no, nah, I'm cool. I don't, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. as much as I love those cookies from, uh, what's the what's the sandwich place called? Pop Belly. They have, uh, bro. I've uh, never had it, so I don't know. Pop Bellies, don't play, with, uh, don't play with me when it comes to Pop Bellies. <laughs> I eat some pot bellies like all day, but cookies are a weakness of mine. I can pass up a lot of other stuff, but I really like cookies. Me too. I like cookies, cookies that are really good. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's hard, but even with that, I gotta stop, you know. Yeah. But I, I get to that point where I'm so obsessive, everything's clicks. It's in there, bam. So, and I think that's why, like, and not to sound like like I'm bragging on myself, but I think that's why my lifts look the way they do in competition because mm. I'm so obsessive and I've I've thought about it so many times. I've done it so many times. Then also with the semen retention, I'm so explosive at that point. I'm so angry, and I got this music blast, and I'm thinking about my son, and everything blows up, and it's like can't stop it. Yeah, I hate to see what happened to that bench press. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I, I, I do it every time, man. So like, it's a process, but I mean, I think everybody, like you said, everyone has their like little ritual that they do. Mm-hmm. But that's mine. That's what I really try to focus on, and you know, just. Being the best I can because I know I know I can do it. You know? I see you got the the cross on, and you mentioned yeah. God earlier. Yeah. Um, do you get an opportunity to go to church, or yeah, I do. do you practice religion some other way. Yep, I do. Uh, I I try to go as much as I can, but I, with me working security, sometimes I I'm a little too tired to go because I mean I'm you know from the, uh, at the bar from like nine till three o'clock, sometimes four o'clock, depending on what's going on. So, um, but I I pray, I do all that stuff. I'm Catholic too. I actually converted when I went to Catholic school. So I was uh, I was Baptist, and then we went to. I was like, you know, I like this. It's cool because I mean, and my mom. We joke about this now because she converted after I converted, mm-hmm. and um, we used to go, you know, those churches, and they're, they're, everybody's so loud, and they're just doing all this, and I'm just like, it's, it's, it's scary to me. <laughs> I know what you're like, talking about. Like, like, you speaking in you know? tongues. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I'm over here, like, what's going on? Like, y'all, y'all crazy? Like, this is what Jesus feel like? <laughs> like it hurt? Like. So, like, for me, I didn't like that. Like, that wasn't for me. And I found the Catholic faith, and I just, I loved it. It was so much more, like, peaceful to me, and I can really get in tune with that. So, I like that better. What, uh, because, like, I went to Catholic school, except I was Christian, but Mm -hmm. they still made us do Lent. So, what is it that you give up for Lent? So, let me me tell you, I I forgot to start, but what I'm going to do, (laughs) I'm going to do, I was actually, I'm going to start doing, like, a, a devotional so, because you don't have to necessarily give up something. Okay. But um, you can, like, do something instead. So, like, okay. I, I'm i going to do, like, a devotional where I read something and kind of reflect on it, just, like, on the word or whatnot. So, gotcha. yeah. Okay. Something cool like that. Yeah. Where can people find you, buddy? Instagram, man. That's my main thing. Instagram, TD Smash. I do some TikToks. Nah, yeah, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. But see, kill TikTok. this is my thing, too. Like, people are like, you should have more followers on these things. But, like, I'm that person. I don't want to do stupid stuff necessarily to get my followers. Like, I'm I'm organic, man. Like, I am who I am. Like, yeah, I can do stupid stuff. I can be silly. But, like, nah. You can just lift there, bro. It's it's not the dancing app anymore. You can just lift And I'm learning that now. Yeah. So, like, I, I post, like, a couple, like, you know, things I've done. But, like, dude, it's like some people, they just... They, they, they cry for that attention. Like, I'm, I'm just here to lift. I'm just here to bring you world records, man. I want to show you yeah. some things you haven't seen before, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to sit here and, like, you know, try to deadlift 900 pounds in my underwear and then, you know, <laughs> like, like weird stuff like that. Like, yeah. that's, that's not me. And maybe somebody else. Uh-huh. Our boy Huck Finn, that's him. <laughs> he does that. That's my boy. Shout out yeah. to Huck Finn. That's my boy. Yeah. But you see other people doing that. It's like, I know that's not you. Uh-huh. That's not organic. That's not you. Don't do that. It's not. It's not you. Don't do that. You know. Mm-hmm. Don't well, leave it alone. Be your own person. Gotcha. So that's that's how I feel. You know. Mm-hmm. That's great. 
Love Thank that. you for your time today. Appreciate yeah. it. And best of luck with everything coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Take us on out so here, Andrew. It's a dream come true. Oh, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Please drop us a comment down below and like today's episode right here on YouTube. If you're on the iTunes, Spotify, or wherever audio platform you're on, uh, don't be shy. Come over to YouTube and drop us a comment and let us know what you guys thought about today's episode. Uh, and please follow the podcast at Mark Bell's Power Project on Instagram, at MB Power Project on TikTok and Twitter. And if you're not subscribed right here on YouTube, please subscribe and turn on all those bell notifications. Uh, you can follow me at I am Andrew Z on Instagram and Twitter and Sima, where can people find you? Guys, don't sleep on John Mayer. He's got a point. It's really good fucking music. <laughs> That's right. Bodies of Wonderland. What else? No, There's a lot staying. of stuff. Yeah. Bro, he's, he's got it all, man. He, he did the stuff with Chappelle back in the day, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he yeah. did. That's right. Is it the... Um, the bu- the barbershop. The barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All you gotta do is play. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. So <laughs> they start dancing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> that's crazy, man. But it's the truth. Like, it's, it's a stereotype. It's, it's somewhat true. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Attitude, idiot, describe you. See what I'm saying? Yang on TikTok and Twitter, Mark. At Mark Smelly Bell, strength is never a weakness, weakness is never a strength. Catch you guys later.